Jesus Christ. In the absence of the account, or if this gospel passage was not written, there would be an impression that this Matthew is somebody who had a deep knowledge of the life of God, most especially the scriptures, most likely the Old Testament, or he is a scholar. No. With the way he put the words of Jesus together. But then here, it was mentioned to us that this Matthew was a tax collector, a money man. His expertise more, more likely is on accounting. No. And I always tell it in the form of a humor that Matthew followed the basic principle of accounting. May accountant ba tayo dito sa mga associates natin? Alam niya yan, yung basic ano ng principle ng accounting, yung debit, credit, at saka kupit. <laughs> of course, no offense to our accountants. But here, people don't like them. People don't like Matthew. He's making a lot of kupit, more likely. And also, they work for the Roman government as collectors of taxes. And every day of their lives, they are counting dirty defiled money no? dirty na na talagang marumi pinagpapalitan sa mga kamay di ba sa panahon natin ngayon ng pandemya ito ang iniiwasan natin no pag naghawak ng pera magabot ng maglagay ng alcohol or we are practicing now the uh, moneyless transactions. We use cards, GCash, PayMaya, and all of this. But again, it is more about being defiled physically. And of course, they are defiled spiritually in the way they live their lives and in the way they treat people. But surprisingly here, when Matthew heard about Jesus, he got up and followed him. He saw or probably heard something about Jesus. That in the end, whatever he possesses in life, properties, money, possession, became meaningless because he found our Lord Jesus Christ. And his calling became a controversy. Jesus dealing with sinners, with tax collectors, with prostitutes, no, were noticed by the authorities, the spiritual authorities in his time. That's why he questioned him, or they questioned him. And here comes this famous line that those who are well do not need a physician but seek do. And so what happened with Jesus in this calling of Matthew, he became our spiritual physician. Jesus, the physician of our soul. And we have fascination with doctors, with physician, with healing. Ang mga masses na well attended ay tungkol sa healing or mga programs that we watch on TV, TV series about medicine are well watched. Our heroes in this pandemic are those who are working in the medical fields. And who will not forget, well, our generation, I'm older definitely than you, 
by what 25 24 years we have a game called Dr. Quack Quack when we were kids we will hold the hand and we will twist our bodies our hands and after we will have that mangled disfigured image we will say Dr. Quack Quack Dr. Quack Quack and then one of us will untangle us no and that's what happened with Matthew. Jesus untangled his disfigured life. And later on, he became a missionary. Later on, he became an apostle and an evangelist. And so as we celebrate this feast of Matthew, may we celebrate also the mercy and compassion of our Lord Jesus Christ. In one of his sermons, uh, sermons about the Feast of Matthew, Pope Francis said, If you would receive mercy, recognize yourself as a sinner. And as he continued, not guilty of sin in the abstract, but guilty of concrete sins. So many we have committed them. And let us look on Jesus with a merciful glance full of love. And so St. Matthew teaches us to recognize Jesus as the physician of our souls. And may we be inspired like you, maybe not to write another gospel, but to live the gospel that we have heard from our Lord Jesus Christ, especially the gospel of mercy, the gospel of compassion, the gospel of second chance. Amen.